Let's learn how to create custom diagonal wipe transitions in Camtasia. There's already a ton of drag and drop transitions available, but a diagonal wipe is not one of them. In this video, I'll show you how to create two different diagonal wipes, one that's simple and one that's a little more complex. Let's get into it. Did I say two diagonal wipes? I actually meant three. I'm gonna show you three variations of the same thing. So starting here with a sample project in Camtasia, I've got two video files here. Let's bring them down into the timeline, one after the other. This first one here, and then the second one we'll put below it. See, normally if you wanted to transition from one to the other, you would go up here to transitions, and then you would find the transition that you want. They have different categories, um, or you can search for them by name, but there are dozens and dozens of transitions here, uh, almost too many. <laughs> but if you find one that you like, make sure you click on this star in the top right corner because then it will show up in your favorites, okay? I like the fade and the fade through black. Very simple, but they're the ones that I use the most, so I've added them to my favorites. So if we come back to transition, let me just look for slide, okay? If I type in slide, there's a slide left, very simple, and a slide right, okay? Uh, this card slide is slightly different. The smooth slide is also different. Pretty cool, though. Um, but these slides are just horizontal, and if I drag one down here and release it between the two clips, let's just zoom in here so we can see what I did. Um, it adds the transition, which you can highlight like that, and then let's just play through it to see what it looks like. That's just a simple slide left, okay? So you have slide left and slide right, but you don't have a, a diagonal slide. There is no such thing here, but we can create one custom. So let me go ahead and delete this one here that we added. I just highlighted it and press delete. Um, let's uh, kind of reposition things here. I don't need these clips to be so long, so let me just uh, cut off the ends here like this, using the S key to split them, and we'll bring these back to the beginning. Now what we're gonna wanna do is we want these to overlap, okay? Because we're gonna create a transition in this area right here, okay? So now what we wanna look for Let's go up to Visual Effects. No, sorry, first, before we do that, we wanna go up to Annotations, okay? We need to add a shape. We need to get that diagonal shape uh, to sweep across uh, our, through our transition, okay? Right now, it would just transition a hard cut from one to the other, okay? Um, but now what we're gonna do is let's look for a diagonal shape, and the easiest way to do that is just to grab a square shape like this, and drop that into place like that. Let's just resize it here like so. And let's stretch this out and make it larger. Okay, like this. Now let's grab this rotation button here and we can click and we can rotate this like this. Okay, just click and drag to rotate it until we find the angle that we want. Okay, now let's also zoom out. So we want to start with this completely off screen over here, and then we want this to slide on and cover up the whole image. So you can see we have some adjustments to do here. Let's just drag this like that, make it larger down here, drag it this way and this way until we're completely covering it. Okay, and now if we hold our shift key and drag this back, Okay, I can already see that I'm going to want to raise this up because I want it to be a perfect uh, diagonal cover. Okay, so I'm just holding my shift key. That forces it to only go horizontally. So I'm holding the shift, click, and then drag. Let's see if we can get it all covered up. Uh, not quite. Let's just make it a little bit bigger here. There we go. So that's totally covered. Hold shift and drag it back till it's off screen, okay? So with that done, let's also go ahead and change the color of this. Um, we don't necessarily have to in this case, but it will make things easier, I promise. <laughs> so let's, with this highlighted, let's go up and change the color to white, okay? Just like so. So now holding the shift, we can see it's, it's now white, okay? Now let's keep it off the screen and let's zoom in to the area so we can see what we're working on here. Now what we want to do is we want to grab a media mat 
and put that on the shape. So where you find that is you go into visual effects and look for this right here, this media mat. You have to scroll down, if you're at the top, you scroll down about halfway down, click this media mat and drag it onto the shape. Okay? Now what that did is, let's, let's pull this back here. What the media mat does is it basically makes the track right below the shape invisible. Okay, so what you're seeing with the playhead here, you're seeing this one. You're not seeing this one. As you can see, this one here is the green picture of the waterfalls, whereas this one over here is the, is the flowers, right? So normally if we put the playhead here, like if let's just hide this shape. If we put the playhead here, we would see this one, right? Because it's on top of this one. But now let's unhide what we added the media mat to, and it makes this track disappear essentially okay so now you can see what the media mat does let's go ahead and animate this into proper position so we want to with it highlighted we want to grab an animation click on animations here custom animation we'll drag that down okay till we're right here and this is the starting position over here okay and then the ending position, we want this to totally cover it up. Now I can already see, I'm, I'm kind of doing this backwards, but I'm doing this on purpose and you'll, you'll see why. So with this covered up, with this endpoint selected, let's go ahead and move this shape. I'm going to hold my shift key down again. Move this shape so it totally covers this up. Okay, and release. So now what do we have? We'll put the playhead here, we'll hit the space bar, and that wipes the other image over top of it. But you can see I kind of did it backwards, right? Now the way to fix this, there's two ways I can fix this. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's just drag this. Um, I'm going to reshape, resize this so that, there we go. It happens a little bit quicker. And now let's just watch this through. I'll make this a little bit larger. Let's watch this through. You see the problem there? So there's two ways to fix this. The first way which is probably the easiest way, would be to rearrange things like this. Okay, now let's try it. That works just fine. But I want to show you the other way, because this will come in handy. If you do have this backwards like this, right, so that you're starting with one image, it jumps quickly to the other one and then wipes it away and then back. Okay, it's, it's basically reverse of what you want. With the media, what you do is with this shape highlighted, come over here to the media mat properties, and right now we have it in mode alpha. Okay, if we click alpha invert, that will also fix the problem. Okay, so now watch this. There you go, and that's our diagonal wipe in its simplest form. That is the easiest way to add that transition. And if you want to vary the speed. Okay, that's the that's one speed. You you can basically shorten this up like this, uh, or you can stretch it out and make it longer. You can also play with the easing. Maybe you like the look better if you uh, change the animation easing to exponential in and out. Just in, and now play that and see what it looks like. Little faster wipe. It it starts off slow, speeds up, and ends slower. The animation. So that's that's another thing you can do. Okay, so that is the first wipe transition. Now this second one is a little more complex, but I think it looks a whole lot better. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back in here and let's actually back up a little bit. I'm going to delete this animation. Uh, and I'm going to give myself a little bit more space to work with. Let's just stretch this out a little bit like that. Okay, let's give ourselves a little bit more space. Now first I'm going to have to explain something about these media mats. Okay, so if you remember the media mat that we chose, okay, was alpha invert, all right? With uh, alpha invert, that was what a lot, let, here, let me just move this back over like this, okay? Alpha invert means that whatever is underneath the shape, okay, and this is the shape here, it's going to hide what's immediately below it on the one track below, and it's going to show what's on the track below that, okay? That's what the alpha invert does. Now, the alpha was the reverse, okay? It actually shows only what's below it, 
Okay, it showed it basically you can, get, you can see through the shape to see what's immediately below it. Okay, but for our purposes, we needed to use the uh, alpha invert. Okay, but in this case, we're going to use luminosity invert. And you'll notice that right off the bat, it, it is exactly the same as alpha invert. And the reason it is, is because we chose this white color for the shape. With alpha, the color doesn't matter. Okay, if you use the alpha media mat, then whatever the color is doesn't matter. It's just going to, you're going to be able to see through that shape. Okay, but with luminosity, the color does matter. You're only going to be able to see through what is white in color and what is black in color, you're not going to be able to see through. Okay, so because of that, if we chose a color that's, that's exactly halfway between white and black, you'll be able to see halfway through, if that makes sense. You'll see half of what's on the track immediately below and half of what's on the track below that. Okay, so let me just demonstrate. So let's just put the, we're, we've got the shape here. We've got about half of it covered up. And now let's go ahead and change the media mat to, uh, oh, it's already luminosity invert. Let's change the color, sorry. Go ahead and we'll change the color to a gray color. Okay, let's go ahead and choose gray like this. And as you'll see here, it's kind of hard to tell with these two images, but you can see half of this image and half of like half of this image and half of this image. And if I move this shape, you can kind of see the difference. Okay. So that's seeing half halfway through, so to speak. And if I change that color, I mean, you can see the difference if I move more to the, to the black area, right? Or more to the white, you can see the difference how it's happening. Okay. So let's leave it halfway. All right. And that is, that is our shape. Now let's move this off of the screen, just like that. Okay. That's going to be our first level. Okay. I want two sweeps, right? Two vertical or sorry, two diagonal wipes to go across. The first one is going to be half like this one. And the second one, let's just go ahead and go control D to create another copy of this one. Let's hold down shift and move this back a little bit. Okay. So now we have them in two different locations, these two shapes. Now this one that's going to be lagging behind, I want to make that white again. So let's go ahead and make this a white color, just like this. Okay. And you'll see this all come together. Let's go ahead and add our animations back in. We'll animate this one. Okay. And then we'll also drag an animation onto that one. So let's move this one first. Actually, we'll have to move this out of the way in order to be able to click and drag it. So let's go ahead and totally cover it just like that. Okay. And now with this second one, let's go ahead and move that one to there. It's totally covered. Let's see what we get with that. You see what's happening? Let me enlarge this just so you can see what's going on. Okay. Let's go ahead and play this. That happened awful fast. Let's change the speed. I'll just drag this out. So to slow it down. Okay. That's our second diagonal wipe. Now for the third one, I'm going to go even a little more complicated, but again, I think it's just, you're leveling up one more again. So for this one, what we want to do is we want to add an intermediate level, so to speak. So what we want to do is I want to highlight all these three and I want to raise them up one level like so. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to introduce a, a middle layer here. So let's go up to annotations and grab a shape. Okay. Just like this. And for this one, uh, let's move the playhead here so we can see it. Let's cover the whole screen with this. Oops. Just like so. Okay. And, uh, and you can change that color. Let's just leave that color for now. Um, let's actually add another layer. So in this case, what I'm going to do, it's going to be this intermediate layer and I'm going to put a logo on that layer. 
So let's go ahead to our media bin here. I'll go ahead and bring a logo in here like this. And now let's bring this logo down onto the screen, like so. Okay, so there you go. You can you can put whatever logo you want there. That's that's my logo for Rob the Maritimer, um, and I've got that there. So let's go ahead and make these smaller, so it just occurs during the. Actually, I'm going to want to do something else here as well. So let's leave it like that for now. So you see what's happening now? That's doing that that double wipe effect and then it's revealing the logo. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to group these two together, the shape and the logo. So we'll highlight them both, right click, click on group. Okay, now let's get rid of all the empty tracks. Bring this down like this. This is going to help us for the next step. So the next step is let's go ahead and highlight both of these, control C to copy them, and let's paste them over here. And we'll back them up like this, okay? Now let's see what we're doing here. You see that? Actually, what I have to do is I have to, let's just shorten this up like this. This was our second clip. Let's just stretch that out. And now let's play the entire clip through. There. So now you have the double wipe, logo reveal, and then a double wipe again, and then you've got your second clip. So. That didn't happen very quickly. If you want to speed things up, you just have to shorten the uh, animation arrows like so. Okay, and shorten this like this. Just shorten the clips. We can delete these, right? Shorten this and then highlight these again. Control C and Control V to paste them there. Shorten this. Now you've got a, a shorter transition that will happen faster. Just like that. Do you want more tips like this? Let me know in the comments below or come join me in the live stream. I live stream regularly here on YouTube, sharing my screen and doing how-to tutorials. I show you how I make my videos and I answer your questions live. So if you're looking to improve your videos, join me in my next live stream. I'm Rob and I'll see you in the next video or in a live stream. I'll see you soon.